Happy birthday, dear Mark. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Hamill. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And we'd like to thank you cult members for watching on a regular basis, even though we're being silly. <laughs> we? You got a mouse in your pocket? Me and the monkey. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, yes, it's Mark Hamill's 66th birthday, and we're celebrating by watching Monday Night Football. <laughs> well. He told us to. To be honest, he told us to wait until October 9th, but. All right. There, there is some, there was some post that he was having back and forth online with someone. And he said, if I was you, I'd watch Monday Night Football on October 9th. <laughs> and then which point George Lucas's little um, spies called and said, hey, Mark, shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, he's Luke Skywalker. He can say whatever <laughs> he wants. <clears throat> Uh, so we have some stuff that we want to go over, a couple of reviews of different things, um, and then we're going to go back to the game because the Cardinals are playing versus the Cowboys, and yep. so um, we want to go back and watch that. So we, we wanted to to impart our wis wisdom onto you. <laughs> or something. Or something. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so last night, we uh, they actually let us see the first episode of uh, Star Trek Discovery on regular NBC. Yep. And I, I took it very much as... Um, that crack dealer giving you the really the first one's the first free, one's free <laughs> and then the rest of them you got to pay for um we are obviously there's a giant enterprise sitting over there so we're, we're we're pretty big uh star trek fans um this is not star trek no it's a it's a cool sci-fi thing um and it has elements of of star trek but i it's before the original series right and but but it, it should have i don't know it, it doesn't feel right no it feels like this where the series or where star trek universe is now versus right. where it was right then and shouldn't shouldn't it be a little more campy it uh, here's here's one, one of my major issues it looks like the jj abrams universe yeah, I've heard that several times today. And that is why I'm struggling with it. I'm okay with the movies being shiny and bright and stuff like that. I'm totally okay with that. But all of the TV series, all of them including freaking Enterprise and Deep Space Nine, were duller. They, they were much more dull in the lighting and the costumes weren't as bright. And it well, wasn't the as original, shiny. The original oh, and They were was... bright colors, but they weren't like... Oh my God! I mean, come on! Look at those Klingon outfits. They look like freaking uh, uh, the derelict campaign with just some <laughs> bright spray paint on it. I, I just it wasn't it. I feel I I feel like I want to see more of it, but what they gave us wasn't enough for me to go get uh, the get the service. Yeah, I'm not paying six bucks a month to to watch it. I, I just I. I I don't know how you. I don't, we we really didn't talk about it last night after we watched it because it was so late. But did you? How did you feel the kind of the same uh, way? I, yeah, I, I mean, I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. Yeah, it didn't feel very Star Trekky. It just felt felt field felt sci fi e. <laughs> I'm just making up words left and right. That welcome. To, that that's my whole world <laughs> over here. English is my second language. Uh, uh, I I just. I, there's been a lot of complaints before it actually came out and there's a lot more complaints about it now. I understand what they're trying to do. It's not enough. I'm just, I'm just it's just not enough. I'm sorry. I just, if you were on regular TV and you could put it on TNT or TBS or something like that and give it a season to kind of work itself out. Yeah. But CBS isn't going to sell the rights to it. Yep. So, so or, that's the problem. So, whatever. um, I would suggest you give it a watch just because everybody's talking about it, but you don't need to waste your money on the service. Um, we will probably find it somewhere at some point in time 
it'll show up on BBC America or something like that. <laughs> um, because BBC America only plays Star Trek <laughs> pretty much right now. True. So um, there's been <laughs> talks with uh, J George R R R R R R R R Martin. Um, he's been running his mouth a little bit because we're getting to the end of this uh, Game of Thrones series, the TV series. The book series will never be done. Um, <laughs> but there was been talks and some rumors and stuff about doing a prequel based on what? Well, so I think that they... Uh, the, the way I understood it was... HBO somebody other than than George came out and said even when Game of Thrones is over it's not going to be over we're working on something new mm -hmm. and then George in an interview and I don't remember if it was for a magazine or a yeah I think it was a ma some magazine magazine like said you know basically came out and said it's going to be a prequel yeah yeah, and there's been a lot of discussions about what that prequel is going to be. Is it the um, the Targaryen Civil War? Is it going to be all this other, you know, all these different things and a lot of stuff that they've already dealt with within the show. But one of the things that it seems uh, the Collider guys, um, Ken Napsok, who hosts um, Thrones Talk, did a video, and he pretty much thinks that it's going to be. Um, can't remember what the name of the war was but it was like a thousand years and it pretty much aligned all the houses so all the houses right. got aligned after this giant battle and it's like a thousand years in the in the past right and so that would be kind of an interesting uh, a thought process yeah i think that they're gonna need to do something that they've talked about or referenced in the current game of thrones to kind of tie people who aren't into the books which i'm sure go into way more of the history and oh stuff, yeah 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 into it or otherwise it's just gonna be a different show yeah in the game of thrones yeah theme yeah i i, I like the idea of maybe doing a prequel but i don't know if it's it's let's be honest it's a cash grab it's a completely cash. Yeah, grab. well, and HBO doesn't. I mean, once Game of Thrones is over, you know they've got they've some got ballers. They've got ballers, and you know they've got a couple, but not anything Game of Thrones level. No, no, and you so. know it took them a long time after Sopranos to get something of yeah, yeah. that level. So, yeah. um, so we'll see. Um, this last week, uh, for the Schmodown, this is our match of the week, and actually, we can say the match of the week. There was one match <laughs> last week. Um, thank uh, God. Thank God. Uh, not that we don't like the movie trivia showdown and movie trivia. We love it. But that two-week period where there was a match every day, <laughs> my nerves are rattled after Sunday we're watching football. And it was like that all week watching all those matches. Um, so we had a five-way for the top contender or the, the fill in the, the last spot for the singles tournament. And the winner would get the chance to uh, play John Roca. Welcome to the Outlaw Nation, you all. Um, and it was um, Robert M Meyer Burnett, the former Inner Geekdom champion. Um, Elliot Dewberry, um, the newest member of the Makuga uh, Wild Berries. Wild Berries. Uh, they're so much fun <laughs> to watch. Uh, Jason Edmond, uh, Scott Matz, Matz. And there was a mystery player, and they didn't know who it was. Right. Well, it ended up being Ben from Team Action, which as soon as he walked, actually what happened was they introduced everybody. They're all sitting at the table, and then they go to start the, in the introduction of the fifth person, and Riley comes out texting on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and Riley's announced that he's retired, at least for now. <laughs> and he goes, comes out, he's like, oh, uh, I was supposed to go and sorry. And, <laughs> and like, everybody's like, oh, <laughs> you said you were retired. You can't be... So it was I, a joke. He should have just gone over and sat down. Yeah. Um, but it ended up being Ben from Team Action. As soon as Ben came out, we're both boo, boo, boo. <laughs> uh, it actually was a really good. I like the the five way matches, the three way matches. I, yeah. I like those a lot. Yeah. Um, it was a really good match. Um, a lot of back and forth. Um, Ben was very quiet, which is very unusual yeah. for him. Yeah. Uh, but it came down to him and Jason Inman, and Inman won. Yep. And kind of a shocker. 
and he gets a chance to go against Roca, and then he said in the post-match interview that if Roca beats him, he will come out with him for the rest of the tournament and be his hype man, corner guy, cut dude, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Uh, but it was it was really good. Yeah, it was yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, they did um on Friday they did a um a preview of the tournament essentially episode, and so uh just getting you ready for the tournament, which starts tomorrow. Okay. And uh, and they're not gonna do 15 matches in a week like they did the other one, because uh, they need to get um, everything's leading up to sp- the spectacular in December. So right. So they got a couple months we gotta, to yeah, spread to, it out to work it out. The the team tournament they needed to make sure they get that all figured out and stuff. So the 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 singles tournament is a little bit a little bit longer. So. And if anybody's watching, you need to make the comic book comic book men. That that yes. needs to happen. Yes. They all need to get a on there. Fatal Five Way of the Comic Book Man. Comic it's book Kevin man. Smith's show, um, and the and they all you know, they, four guys run the Secret Stash, which is Kevin Smith's comic book shop. Yep. Of course, Kevin Smith's got a com- comic book shop. <laughs> um, the one problem I I heard is one of the guys is deathly afraid of flying, and so getting him on a plane to fly oh, and to they're LA, in New York, and they're like in Nassau or something like that. So well, yeah. So put Jason Mewes in for in his place. Oh, that would that would go so well. <laughs> He's sober. <laughs> Please get the comic book man in a fav- fatal five way inter geekdom match. First win to fifty points wins. That's <laughs> what it's going to come down to. Um, we uh, we wanted to talk about the box office this week um, because we went and saw Kingsman, Kingsman. the Gold, the Golden Circle. Um, and it, we've seen it and yep. we've seen, uh, American Assassin. So we've seen three of the top four, um, Kingsman had a not great weekend. They, I think they were expecting 65 to 70 and it only did, it did less than 40 million. Oh. And yeah, it's not, I mean, it, it only made a hundred and 120, the first one overall domestically okay. right. now it made a hundred overall worldwide on opening weekend so they're going to make their money back for this movie um i just think the the i won't say negative weeks uh, the negative uh uh reviews affected it i just think we're in this really like weird spot for people to go see movies right now yeah well and there's probably people you know i was thinking about it today and sequels are just not doing it now uh, I, there's there's reasons for the studios to make them and they you know there's all the financial stuff and they weigh right, you know right. blah, blah 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 but just over the last at least year every sequel that's come out has just not been as good as the first one unless you're in the marvel mcu or the star wars universe your sequels yeah tend to struggle and and i don't I, I mean i know they are but i don't consider those sequels they're part of a giant story right and i think that's i think that's the difference is that you're trying to do uh you're trying to do a retelling of the original story by still doing some of the stuff that happened in the first one but trying to do it in a new way yeah uh, but in the marvel universe and the star wars universe and somewhat in the dceu um, you're telling one big story and you're plotting in these movies in different spots. Yeah, well. which I think gives them uh, more of a direction to go instead of just how do we how do we reinvent the wheel? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess John Wick 2 is probably the, um, you know, the... It did really well. Yeah, on, the uh, one on that... It, it did, re- actually, it did... I think it made more in the first three weeks than it, the first one did. Well, it was a sleeper. It I was mean, a it super was... sleeper, yeah, yeah, but... And people complained about how it wasn't it wasn't as good, and I thought it was just as good as the first one. Yeah, so. and maybe people are just were waiting to see how the Golden Circle did. I mean, I we thought it was good. Yeah, um, you know, we. Heard... Well, I don't know what you were. Ex- I, people who are complaining, like Christian Harloff on Collider, was <laughs> he? I am panned the shit out of it and still gave it a positive score. I, I'm, I'm confused, so confused by <laughs> what he was trying to do. He's I, like, I loved it, but. It was terrible, and I'm like, what? What? what I, 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 I have to ask the question. Then, what were you expecting? 
Were you expecting the same movie again? Because yeah. if you're expecting the same movie again, then you'd still be, compl- you'd still be complaining. Yeah. You'd probably be complaining more that you just did a rehash of the original one. And that's, I think, a lot of problems that sequels have been having is a lot of people want a retell of the first story and then the other half of people want something completely new and right. you can't make everybody right. happy. And we talked about that in the um, in the review is that you can't, you can't put lightning back in the bottle. You can't have yeah. that fresh new uh, experience and still stay true to the first one again it's just not it's just never going to happen yeah. so and we're back <laughs> yay technical difficulties uh <laughs> Buttons aren't toys. Remember that, kids. Uh, so it um, is crushing. Um, it's uh, $266 million, and uh, it made another $30 million this weekend. Um, it's pretty impressive. I mean, it, it's it did better than... Uh, it just passed The Exorcist Yeah. Um, for uh, biggest box office for a horror film horror ever film. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then... but However... The, uh, uh, the, because that was in the, what, the late seventies, Exorcist came out. If they, if I think it might've been earlier than that, but yeah. Okay. So the seventies, but with inflation, right. Adjusting it, for inflation. It's like, it made like $800 million, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> Cause that was like, you know, that was, that was all word of mouth. Yeah. I think I heard there wasn't anything else out that weekend yeah. or something. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of, uh. Uh, fluke. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of, kind of went on its uh, kind of the uh, perfect storm of everything at that yeah, point yeah, in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it did come out today. They are gonna. They are. We all knew. Uh, they are gonna do the sequel. Yep. Um, the it sequel. Um, and all of the kids are coming back. Um, and but the big thing is, is they have a date. Um, September sixth of two thousand nineteen. So we're talking just just two years. Two years. Yep. Um. They still have to cast the adults. Yep. Um, but um, Andy Muccielli? No. Much, Muccielli? Muccietti. 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 Uh, is definitely coming back. He's signed on. And then Gary Doberman, who I believe wrote the first one, is going to write the second one. Um, so uh, two years, but that's 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 pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long it took him to make this one. But it's not like there's a ton of... of CG. Um, they already have the book, so it's not like they're writing a screenplay from scratch, right? And they could work on the screenplay and find the adult actors, yeah, at the same time. Yeah, so they, they need to get the kids. You know, that's the big thing when you're working with kids. You've got to get them back in front of the camera as quick as possible, so yep. they don't. Yeah, and they're only going to do flashback scenes with the kids, so they won't be the main part. But yeah, yeah. but that's the thing. Yeah, um, Lego Ninjago movie got crushed. Uh, and I say crushed because it only made twenty million dollars, and I think they were hoping f- for three or four times that. Um, uh, we saw the Lego Batman movie. We liked it a lot. We took the grandkid. We liked the first Lego movie, but there was really no desire for either one of us for this. Right, because the Lego Ninjago thing is, you know, you you really have to be a kid to even know. Yeah. The only reason we know what Lego Ninjago is is because we have grandkids. Yeah, and and, and you know, it, I I've, I've heard some people say that it was, you know, it's pretty much just for kids, and these kids movies, the Pixar movies, the Shrek movies, the first Lego movie have adult elements yeah. and kid elements. And so you yeah. have that back and forth. Well, look at DuckTales. DuckTales is like huge with adults right now because right. Um, because they remember when this was on when they were kids. And yeah. it's still a kid's show and kids can still watch it, but the adults are digging it too. And there's a lot of adult sense of humor in DuckTales. Yeah. I mean, I think Animaniacs had a lot of adult yeah, sense of humor. Yeah, in it, I think I watched it as a kid. I think so. all the Warner Brothers cartoons had more of a. I was a Warner Brothers Hanna Barbera kid. I didn't do the Disney stuff because it was too nice. <laughs> I loved Warner Brothers, so yeah, I I I, I get I want adult themes in my my cartoons. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I know. Um, 
American Assassin um, made $6 million. It's really good. We had fun. It's made $26 million. I think the whole budget was 40 so they're going to make their money back. Oh, that's good. Um, and and I, I like hearing that, um, especially with uh, Daniel O'Brien, who's the lead, and Michael Keaton were both so good in it. Yeah. Give them, like, Michael Keaton's looking for work. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. So now we're going to talk about Mother. Mother! Now, <laughs> Mother! Um, we, neither one of us have seen mother we will we will preface everything we're about to say that we have not seen it we we're w- still waiting for our movie pass we're still waiting for our yeah ten dollars i've spent ten dollars a month and i haven't got my pass yet um <laughs> now there's been a lot of controversy around mother and a lot of issues with mother because it was marketed the worst marketing campaign i can think of in 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 five years at least Right, so nobody's gone to see this movie because what was it? Cinema, cinema score, cinema. C- yeah, that gave it yeah. gave it an F, and their rating system is based on people walking out of the theater. What'd you think? What'd you think? What'd yeah. you think? And when you've been led to believe by the commercials that it is this kind of movie, and then you spend your 10 bucks a person, 12 bucks a person to go see this movie and it's not that movie. Right. You're going to be pissed off. Whether the movie was good or not, you're going to be pissed off. It was, uh, it, the trailer was in front of it and it was it was promoted as a horror film. Yeah. And it's not a horror film. No, nope. um, apparently it, not. It's it's a deep thought, Darren Ar- Aronofsky style of make you think kind right. of movie. He's the guy that did black swan black swan and stuff like that and so i liked black swan yeah a lot. i did too um and so i i i i didn't want i didn't care to see this i didn't really want to see it it wasn't on my radar of movies that i want to see until all the talk came out because the marketing had been so bad and and and, and i well it was I, marketed as a horror film and right. we typically he typically does not like horror films so it no. wasn't something that we were gonna go see so i just i i I understand the scoring, uh, why I got scored so low, and I understand. Yeah. But if I was Aronofsky or, or Jennifer Lawrence or Javier Bardem or their agents or anything like that, I'd be yelling my ass off at the studio yeah. for doing such a bad job of putting out. And from everybody I've heard says the performances are amazing. Yeah. The direction is amazing, but it's a hard watch. Well, and I think we talked about this last week, but... Um, the studio exec came out and basically threw a temper tantrum. Right. Because... Because um, Rotten Tomatoes ruined it and CineScore or CineScore yeah. or whatever it was that they ruined, ruined it. it. And, and it's... And, and, you know, Netflix can do something, you know, original and everybody loves it and everybody's clamoring for original stuff and then we do something original and it's like... That everything you just said in your little temper tantrum has absolutely nothing to do with why it didn't do right, good. Right, right. Didn't do good because your marketing team sucks. Yeah, and that's on you. <laughs> yeah, and that's and and that's unfortunately this movie is going to go down as the movie. Who, it's going to be known for that more than how what the movie is. Um, Probably, and, yeah. And, and that and that's disappointing because from everything that you know this. Pro- this may be in one of those conversations of dark horse Oscar nominations for performances and stuff like that too. So well, the fact that so what did it make? Uh, last it's made. Week? It's made. Oh my god! It's only made thirteen million dollars. It made 13, ten last weekend, okay. and about three this week. Yeah, I mean it's still chugging along. So, but I think they spent like sixty to make it. Oh yeah. Now I think fifty-five of that was the talent. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe it'll pick up in, you know, um, DVD sales or Or maybe maybe or... it'll be one of those that it just it never really goes away kind of movies because everybody's going to be wanting, like, oh, yeah, there's all that controversy about Mother. Yeah. We should go see that. Maybe. And, and so maybe that, there'll be a little bit of that. And then Friends, Friends Request, um, the, apparently the worst horror film that yeah. came out in five years, according <laughs> to Perry Nimeroff, um, is out, whatever. Uh, but Hitman's Bodyguard for... A th- kind of a throwaway end of the summer movie is still yep. in the theater and it's made seventy three million dollars. I just I just think it's funny that Yeah, that's awesome. Um so a couple compl- 
couple of Comic Con things we wanted to talk about. Um, one of them actually deals with us locally here. Um, there's a new con coming to Phoenix called Ace Comic Con. Um, Phoenix will be the second um, city to host said Comic Con. Uh, the first one is going to be held in New York. And it's actually run by the guys who used to run um, Wizard Entertainment. And they do the Wizard World stuff. Um, it's uh, Garab, Garab, Garab Sh- Seamus. Yeah. Wow. Garab Seamus. Garab Seamus. And his brother, Steven. And um, they left. They built Wizard World into this big thing. Uh, and then they left to start to kind of maybe start trying to do cons and a little bit different thing. And uh, their idea is to do cons in, like, sports arenas. Right. So you're inside the arena. They're going to live stream panels on the Jumbotrons. They're going to make it a, a encompassing um, experience within the arena and everything. Um, and the first one, they have... Um, the Justice League, except for Ben Affleck, showing up in New York. Right. So, you know, Henry Cavill and, and Ellie Lez- uh, Ezra Miller and Gal Gadot and all them, they're all showing up. So they're, they're, they're swinging away at this thing pretty big. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm not 100% clear on what it is they're trying to do because they kept saying like kind of this experience and make it more like you're going to a concert or a sporting event and you know i mean we've been at the um uh the the phoenix stadium here the U pig the <laughs> the U pig um when when it wasn't you know, it was like a home show or something and it's really loud in there. Yeah. And so I'm wondering how they're going to, um, show panels on the jumbotron. They did, they did fan fest there a couple of times, the December fan fest for, for Phoenix comic con. Um, they, they held it there a couple of times I, and then they moved it back to the convention center. I but think I just, they did like down on the floor was the, like was the vendor the vendor and, stuff uh, if they're gonna do like panels that. on the jumbotron I, I i are you gonna sit in there and watch the panels and then go i i just i don't understand i i i, and I don't understand how they're making this an experience i just i i want to see more i stuff on i want to see more uh, it's being held in january here for us so um I, i'm interested in maybe going for a day just to see what it's like um but you know i'm not spending 65 bucks for a second con in January, when three months later, I'm spending... Yeah. Not that our Comic-Con here is expensive. It's actually very reasonably priced. Um, we can spend 65 bucks and go for the whole thing we, if we buy tickets early yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if they're going to bring in Gal Gadot and, 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 and Ezra mm. Miller and, you know... that Are, are they? <laughs> that's what they said that's coming to the New York one. So... Are they coming... For here, or are they? Because they're talking about the panels being on the jumbotron. You don't have to be there. They could Skype that's, them all in. That's true. That's true. Are they coming to actually do signatures and and pictures? Uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm very interested in in, in what it is. I the ad popped up on my Facebook page, and I was it looked like it was a. Uh, like a fake con that somebody was kind of throwing yeah. together and stuff yeah. like that. And then news, more and more news started coming out about it and it, it became very obvious that this is a real thing. And the people who are behind it, it's not like they haven't done a big boy con, right? You know, big right. boy level cons. So, uh, I'm just interested to see, I'm getting really antsy to go watch the game. Um, <laughs> so I just, I just find it interesting to see what happens there. Um, and then we wanted to thank everybody who went to Salt Lake Comic Con um, this last weekend. Uh, the the there was a plan in place um, at one point in time for us to go up to Salt Lake um, for the weekend and go to the con, and then hit Vegas on the way back. Um, and we couldn't wait. Uh, actually, we got free rooms over Labor Day weekend, so we went to <laughs> Vegas. Then. But um, uh, there was a lot of uh, really good stuff that came out of Salt Lake Comic Con this year. Um, it is quickly becoming one of the top cons in yeah, the country. It's it's almost um better than the one here. I 
as far as talent goes. There was some. Um, uh, John Borman was there. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Mel was there for the day. Uh, Christopher Lloyd was there. Um, uh, Elijah Wood was there. Uh, Joan Cusack um, and um, John Cusack were both there. They did a panel together. All the Twisted Tune guys were there. It was. It was. Um, Michael Roker. Uh, Michael Roker was there. Um, and so um, uh, Dick Van Dyke was there. He was here this year, and he was there. Um, so a, a really good attendance, really good cosplay. Um, a lot of, you know, we got a lot of good pictures and videos and stuff like that. And we tried to share some of the stuff that we could. Um, but I just wanted to thank everybody at Salt Lake for sharing as much as you do. Um, not a lot of the other cons do that. And, and so I'm a yep. little... Really, I'm just jealous. <laughs> so now I'm going to go edit these two videos together to make one big video. <laughs> and uh, tell us what you think. Are you excited about this Ace Comic Con and the possibilities of having a new con in the circuit? Um, are you looking forward to the Game of Thrones prequels? Have you seen Mother? Please, Mother! <laughs> please let us know your thoughts on this episode. Please leave us a comment. You also, when you're there, hit the little thumbs up button and like the video. <laughs> also, if you go up into the corner, you can say that there's this thing up there that says subscribe. Subscribe to the channel uh, and share with all your friends because we're trying to build a community of people to talk about movies and TV shows and cons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so please do that. You can also get a hold of us on Facebook at the Pop Culture Cult. We're Pop Culture Cult One on Instagram and we're at Pop underscore Cult One on Twitter. We're also on the Stardust app uh, under the Pop Culture Cult. Please download the, the app, like us first, and then go like everybody else. Anything else? Nope. Go Cardinals. <laughs> Good night now. <laughs>